there's another burden that comes with this whole intelligence thing that humans got is um, the extinguishing of the light of consciousness, which is uh, kind of realizing that we're gonna be dead someday. And uh, there's a bunch of philosophers like Ernest Becker, who kind of think that this realization of mortality and then fear, sometimes they call it terror of, of, of mortality, is one of the creative forces behind human condition. Like it's the thing that drives us. Do you think it's important for an AI system? You know, when Psych <laughs> proposed that it's one, it's not human, and it's one of the moderators of his contents. Um, you know, there's another question it could ask, which is like, it kind of knows that humans are mortal. Am I mortal? And I think one really important uh, thing that's possible when you're conscious is to fear the extinguishing of that consciousness, the fear of mortality. Do you think that's useful for intelligence? Thinking like I, I might die and I really don't want to die. I, I don't think so. I think it may help um, some humans to be um, better people. It may help some humans to be more creative and so on. I don't think it's necessary um, for AIs to believe that they have limited lifespans and therefore they should make the most of their behavior. Maybe eventually um, the answer to that and my answer to that will change. But as of now, I would say that that's almost like a, a frill or a side effect uh, that um, is not. And in fact, if you look at most humans, most humans um, ignore the fact that they're going to die most of the time. Uh, so, um, Well, but that's like, uh, this goes to the white space between the words. So what Ernest Becker argues is that that ignoring is we're living in an illusion that we constructed on the foundation of this terror. So we're escaped life as we know it pursuing things, creating things, love, everything we can think of that's beautiful about humanity is is just trying to escape this realization that we're going to die one day. That's his that's his idea. And I think, I don't know if I 100% I believe in this, but there's, it certainly rhymes. It seems like to me, like it rhymes with the truth. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that for some people, um, that's going to be a more powerful factor than others. Clearly, Doug is talking about Russians. <laughs> and I think that... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Russian, so it clearly yeah. it uh, infiltrates all of Russian literature. And, and AI doesn't have to have uh, fear of death as a motivating force in that we can build in motivation. So we can build in the motivation of obeying users and making users happy and making others happy and and so on. And that can substitute for this sort of personal fear of death that sometimes leads to uh, bursts of creativity in, in humans. Yeah, I don't know. I think like, I think AI really needs to understand death deeply in order to be able to drive a car, for example. I, I think there's just some like, there. No, I, I really disagree. I think it needs to understand the value of human life, especially the value of human life to other humans, the um, and understand that certain things are more important than other things. So it has to have a lot of knowledge about ethics and uh, morality and so on. But some of it is so messy that it's impossible to encode. For example, I, there's, I if, if disagree. There's a, so if there's a person dying right in front of us, most human beings would help that person, but they would not apply that same ethics to everybody else in the world. I mean, this is the tragedy of how difficult it is to be a doctor because they know when they help a dying child, they know that the money they're spending on this child cannot possibly be spent on every other child that's dying. And that's, that's a very difficult to encode decision. <laughs> now, uh, perhaps, Perhaps it is, perhaps it could be formalized. Oh, but I mean, you're, you're talking about autonomous vehicles, right? So autonomous vehicles are going to have to make those decisions um, all the time of um, what is the chance of this bad event happening 
um, how bad is that compared to this chance of that bad event happening and so on. And, you know, when an, a potential accident is about to happen, is it worth taking this risk if I have to make a choice? Which of these two cars am I going to hit and why? And See, I was thinking about a very different choice when I'm talking about hero mortality, which is just observing uh, Manhattan style driving. I think that <laughs> humans as an effective driver needs to threaten pedestrians' lives a lot. There's a dance, I've, I've watched pedestrians a lot, I've, I've worked on this problem and it seems like the, the if I could summarize the problem of a pedestrian crossing is the car with this movement is saying, I'm going to kill you. And the pedestrian is saying, maybe. And then they decide and they say, no, I don't think you, you have the guts to kill me. And you walk and they walk in front and they look away. And there's that dance, the, 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 the pedestrian, is this a social contract that the pedestrian trusts that once they're in front of the car and the car is sufficiently from a physics perspective able to stop, they're going to stop. But the car also has to threaten that pedestrian. It's like, I'm late for work, so you're being kind of an asshole by crossing in front of me. But life and death is in like is part of the calculation here. And it's that that equation is being solved millions of times a day. Like, yes. Very effectively. That game theory, whatever yes. whatever that formulation uh, absolutely. is. Absolutely. I just I don't know if it's as simple as like, some formalizable game theory problem. It, it could very well be in the case of driving and in the case of most of uh, human society. I, I don't know, but it, uh, yeah, you, you might be right that this sort of uh, the fear of death is just one of the quirks of uh, like the way our brains have evolved, but it's not, it's not a necessary feature of, uh, of intelligence. Drivers certainly are always doing this kind of estimate, even if it's unconscious, subconscious of what are the chances of various bad outcomes happening? Like, for instance, um, if I don't wait for this pedestrian or something like that, yeah. and um, what is the downside to me going to be in terms of, um, you know, time wasted talking to the police or, um, you know, getting sent to jail or you know things like that? And so, um, and there's also emotion. Like people in their cars tend to get uh, irrationally angry. Well, that's 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 dangerous, but. You know, think think about this is all part of why I think that autonomous vehicles, um, truly autonomous vehicles, are farther out than um, than most people do because um, there is this enormous level of complexity which goes beyond uh, mechanically controlling the car, um, and um, I I can see the autonomous vehicles as a kind of metaphorical and literal accident waiting to happen, <laughs> um, and not just because of their um, overall um, um, incurring versus preventing accidents and so on, but just because of the um, almost um, voracious appetite people have for um, um, bad bad stories about powerful companies and powerful entities. When when I was um, at a coincidentally Japanese fifth generation computing system conference in 1987, uh, while I happened to be there, um, there was a worker at an auto plant who was despondent and committed suicide by climbing under the safety chains and so on and getting stamped to death by a machine. And instead of being a small story that said, despondent worker commits suicide, it was front page news that effectively said, robot kills worker, because the public is just waiting for stories about like, AI kills phonogenic family of five right. type stories. And even if you could show that nationwide, uh, this system saved more lives than it cost and saved more injuries, um, prevented more injuries than it caused and so on, um, the media, the public, the government is just coiled and ready to pounce on stories where in fact it failed, even if they are relatively few. Yeah, it's so fascinating to watch us humans resisting the cutting edge of science and technology and almost like hoping for it to fail and constantly, and, you know, and this just happens over and over and over throughout history. Well, or even if we're not hoping for it to fail, we're, we're fascinated by it. And yeah. in terms of what we find interesting, um, the, 
one in a thousand failures much more interesting than the 999 um, boring successes.